This way you have a chance to continue to grow and get stronger and feel good about reaching goals and become confident. Hello, I'm Anne and welcome to Chronically Beautiful where we are trying to live our best life even though we probably don't feel like it. And today we are talking about goals, resolutions, starting the new year, whatever you want to call it, but we're talking about what are we doing for ourselves as we move into this awesome fresh start of 2020. New decade, so exciting. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please keep watching. But first, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, and don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified of all my future uploads. I am really excited to dive into this topic. Let's go for it. Okay, so, I am not really a New Year's resolution kind of person. I feel like everybody talks a big talk about setting New Year's resolutions, but very few people actually follow through. And in fact, there are statistics that show that some astronomically high percentage of people have given up on their New Year's resolution by February. And that's been me in the past. I've done the same thing. So for the last probably decade, I haven't set any resolutions. But I do believe in setting goals for yourself and putting a plan in place that allows you to reach those goals. So we're going to talk a little bit today about some actual real people strategies for goal setting and then actually reaching the goals so you don't feel like a big failure piece of crap because once again this year you abandon your resolutions five minutes in. Okay. You got to know what you want. What do you want out of the new year? Are you just goal setting because people think you should and that's what everybody else is putting on their Instagram? Rise and grind, let's make it happen, new year, new you. Um, maybe you're happy with where things are and there aren't too many goals you wanna set. Your goals might be something as simple as do laundry every day instead of letting it pile up for Saturday morning. You know, Or your goal could be something as huge as lose 100 pounds. Um, it could be something like completely turning your life around. It could be something like um, working harder on your mental health. It could be finally going to see a therapist. It could be eating better. It could be treating the people around you better. It might just be getting out and walking around your block. There's no goal that's too small and it's really important that you allow yourself to have those small victories. So first things first, you're gonna sit down right now, pause this video, and make a list. Okay. Now take a look back at your list. Is it incredibly vague? So for me, I find that goal setting works the best when I'm very, very specific about what it is that I'm trying to do. So instead of eat better, I might write eat three servings of fruits and vegetables every day. It's very important to give yourself specific goals to reach and small ones so that you're not immediately a failure. Maybe you don't have a lifestyle that allows you to prep and buy three servings of fruits and vegetables every single day and have that ready. Maybe you don't even like those things, but you just want to go for it. Why are you eating stem first? This is a new food for me. How else should I eat it? But it's okay to set small goals with the intention of building on those goals later. So you don't have to start January 1st, I'm gonna change my entire life. The odds of you being successful with that kind of a goal are very, very small, and you're just setting yourself up for failure, and then you're gonna feel so much worse than you do now. So don't do that to yourself. Let's set small, attainable goals, and then we can continue to build upon them. So that big list you just made, what on that list is a huge goal? And can we take that and break it down? So I might say, eat better inside of a circle and then do like a spider chart and do a bunch of offshoots. What does eat better mean for me? Well, it means working from a shopping list when I go to the store. It means not bringing junk into the house. It means prepping reasonable food for myself during the week. It means not leaving myself with nothing to eat for breakfast, but like a waffle. So. I would give myself opportunities to build on that one goal. So now go down your list and do that for each item on your list. Choose when you want to begin. For you, January 1st might not be the best time to begin a big new plan for your life. I know that I'm going to be getting serious again about Weight Watchers and I'm not going to do it on January 1st. I'm on vacation this week and I know that my eating is not going to be great. There's cookies and snacks and junk and leftovers. 
here at the house that I plan on eating because they're here and we're not and it's the holidays and I'm on vacation. But on January 6th when I go back to school, I'm gonna be prepping my meals that week like I normally do, but with the end in mind that I know I wanna lose 10 pounds this year. That's something that I have had as a goal because I don't want to not fit into my clothes and right now I'm in stretch pants world. So for me, that's one of my goals for the year and I'm hoping to hit it sooner than later. We have a pool. I'd like to feel comfortable swimming at it this next summer. So that's just one of my goals and I wanna make sure that I'm gonna set myself up for success. So for me, that's not starting on January 1st. And something I'm sure you've heard before is begin with the end in mind. So if your end game is losing 100 pounds, then as you start, you obviously should have something on your list that has to do with that end. So going out to eat with friends more, probably not the best resolution if your main goal for this year is to lose 100 pounds. Once you have narrowed down each of your large goals into a smaller list of attainable items, now it's time to look at those attainable items and see where you can work them into your current life as it is. So it's unlikely that if you do not exercise that you are gonna start getting up at 5 a.m. every day and going and working out. You must have a, a stronger will than I if you are able to do that because that is not something I can do. And as something else you wanna do is make sure that you are plugging in the items that you made from your big list down to your small list how can you fit these into your life? Do you use a planner? Do you use a phone? How do you keep track of your schedule? So for me, this is one of my planners. Um, this is where I keep track of my monthly schedule. So this is something that I would go in and look and see what do I have going on this month? Is this an opportunity for me to say, okay, well, this is a light month. This is gonna be a great opportunity for me to start putting in a little bit of exercise. Maybe I can take a walk twice this week because there's not a lot going on. So part of this is not just saying, bam, I'm gonna change everything, but you already have a life. You already know what works for you. You already have everything laid out. How can you work these goals into what you are already doing so that you don't have to change everything? Because that's just too much. It's too much for most of us. Set realistic goals. Saying I wanna lose 100 pounds by March 1st is not a realistic goal for anybody. Saying I wanna start getting up an hour earlier by March 1st, that's realistic. And it gives you time to ease into it. Saying I'm gonna get up an hour earlier starting January 1st and that's just gonna be my new life, for me, that's not something I could do. Uh, that would mean for me getting up at 5 a.m. and I could not change my whole life immediately like that and just dive in. So setting realistic goals for yourself that are going to work is really, really important. Speaking to your family, your partner, the people that you spend your life with about your goals is really important. Having the support of those around you is something that is going to be so beneficial in you actually reaching your goals. And they need your support as well. And I know sometimes it's hard because other people in your life might not be supportive and they might think all of this is just a bunch of nonsense, but tell them how important it is to you. And even if they don't believe in it, they believe in you and they need to know that you need that from them. So be open, be honest, let them know what's going on. Maybe say, hey, please don't ask to take me out to the Dairy Queen, because I, I, I can't say no to that invitation because it's just too delicious. <sighs> okay, focus, man. Um, maybe say to them, if you see me acting in a way that's unpleasant and I have been really making a goal of trying to be more pleasant, if you see me acting like a control freak, Put your hand on my arm and just help me to reel myself back in, in a way that's not, you know, starting a fight. Ask your partner for help. Maybe ask them, hey, I'm trying to keep junk out of the house. Can you take your cookies to work and just leave them there? Little things like that. You know, hey, I'm gonna go start seeing this therapist. Um, could you cover dinner for the family on Tuesday nights? Cause that's when I'm gonna be going. There are so many ways that the people around you can help you let them help you. Something else that's important about communicating your goals with others is that when other people know that you've set a goal for yourself, you are now accountable to those people. You know, if, if you're putting it out there on Facebook, that's, you know, 500, 600, 1,000, whatever, how many people follow you on Facebook, all those people know now. And for me, being public like that, it's hard for me to fail when people are watching me. 
Like, I will make sure that I don't fail when people are watching me because that's just how I am. I tell this to my students all the time. I'm a band director and we go and we participate in festivals and, and my group is very good, but we work really, really, really hard to be good. And something I say to them all the time is, I know you can do it because you have to. You don't have a choice. We have to be good because it's, it's out there. The people that are listening to us know that we're good. And now that they know that we're responsible, we have to keep this up. We're not willing to go back down. And that's something that you need to put on yourself as well. Okay, make yourself accountable to others. Let people know, make your goals public. Don't give yourself too many goals. Having a giant to-do list of every little thing that you don't like about yourself that you're gonna fix this year is not good. It's not healthy, it's not realistic, it's not gonna happen, and it's just not gonna be good for you or the people around you. You're gonna end up miserable and feeling like a failure and the whole thing's just gonna blow up. I don't wanna be negative, but I'm sorry. That's what's gonna happen if you list 100 things that you hate that you need to fix right now. So give yourself the opportunity to be successful by, again, being reasonable. You don't need the list of 50 things. Pick one, two, three at the most. And once you have accomplished those things, there's nothing that says that you can't make a new list in March or June or August or next December. You don't have to make the list now. You can just grab a few things off that big list that we made in the beginning, put the rest of it away, stick it in a drawer, fold it in a book, put it away, save it for when you have reached some of the smaller goals. Allow yourself the opportunity to work in tiers. T-I-E-R, not tiers. This way you have a chance to continue to grow and get stronger and feel good about reaching goals and become confident in the person that you are becoming and you don't have this huge wall in front of you that you just always are looking up and it seems like you've never gotten any higher up the wall. And finally, give yourself a break. We all mess up. We all have days that just aren't good. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. Everybody knows what, what I'm talking about. Everybody gets that way. We all have those times where we eat the cake, where we yell at our family, where we flip somebody off when we're driving, we oversleep for work. We're people. We're human. None of us are perfect. I'm sorry, but no one's life is going to look like it looks on Pinterest or Instagram or any of the rest of it. We don't have a filter to put on our life. And it's okay that we don't have a filter. We are people. We have to give ourselves a break if we make a mistake. You can't wallow in it. Don't lay around and say, just forget it. You know, one mistake doesn't mean you've blown the whole thing and forget it. One mistake means you made one mistake and all it has to be is one mistake. It doesn't have to snowball into eating everything in the fridge. It doesn't have to snowball into something terrible when all you did was one little thing. Give yourself a chance to reboot and start again tomorrow. That's the cool thing about days. We have so many chances every single day to restart. Not just every day, every hour, every minute is a chance to restart and begin again. And if you think of life in that way, you're gonna always be working towards your goals. You'll never be a failure. Maybe that minute didn't go well, but you know what? The next minute's gonna be amazing and you can make it so. All right, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed going on this adventure with me. Don't be too hard on yourselves and set realistic goals. What are some of your goals for the upcoming new year or just life in general or the next hour whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in how you're going to be a success this year because I know you can do it because you have to. All right, keep coming back. Take care of you. Fake fun. Oh. That's right. I said hogwash.